Yeah, we did get a new microphone, though, for Pastor, so I'm Hopefully, Tiffany says it works better. Oh, boy. Ah, there we go. See, it does work. <laughs> yes. Good morning and welcome to worship this morning. There are several announcements in our bulletin this morning to draw our attention to. Um, we spent the last week at Bible camp um, with our confirmation age students and our elementary. Um, we, had, we had Ella there and Avery and um, Lee and Alex and um, Ella's mom Amanda this week was at, were at camp. And to start our worship service off and help us prepare our hearts, I'm going to invite our camp students to come forward and share a camp song with us as we begin worship today. wonderful week and there are a gazillion stories to share and we have lots and lots and lots of pictures so if you um if you have time after worship spend some time at the television and watch the slideshow that tiffany put together for us of all the pictures and um maybe one of the one or two of the kids will be around to show you or tell you just a little bit about what you're seeing um but Thank you for the prayers and the encouragement and the letters. Our kids had a letter almost every day of camp. Thank you, thank you, thank you, church, for being um, so supportive of our kids as they grow and develop. Um, now we're heading into fall. I can't believe it. Summer's like that. Um, so there's all kinds of things coming up. The youth are going to have a back-to-school campfire on August 6th. Um, from 5 to 8, there will be food and games and campfire fun and some devotional time 
and a chance to be youth group. And friends are welcome, so spread the word. That is not to be confused with the All Church Campfire, which is coming up at the end of September. The end of September. Yes, not to be confused with that. This is, this is mostly for kids. If you show up, my hunch is that our kids will not say, go home, you old person. They won't do that. <laughs> they let me play all the time. <laughs> so, anyways. Um, then, um, there's a there's a backpack blessing is coming up on Sunday, August 14th. Um, anybody who's connected to school or is heading back, college, grad school, elementary school, high school, work at school, bring your school bags, whatever they might look like. And we will bless the year ahead and pray for um, all of the learning and growth that will happen. And spread the word to friends because we have plenty of backpack blessings to go around. Um, we are celebrating our 90 years of ministry at American Lutheran. Um, we had a fantastic ice cream social. It was a lot of fun. Um, and we have our sign out in the front in the narthex that you walk past every Sunday. Um, we are hoping to gather a whole collection of note cards on the back that has all of the memories of ALC um, written on it. So, so far, there's not so many memories on the back of that. So this is your reminder from pastor, right? Okay. Um, were you married here? Were, did your kids get baptized here? Were you, was there a confirmation here? Do you remember a funny thing that happened on the way out of church one Sunday? Was there a time that a friend just encouraged your faith in a profound way? I think that you all should have, you know, 10 or 15 note cards to contribute to this board. Don't feel like you only have to pick one memory, right? Let's fill it up because when we get to chili cook-off night, it will be, it will make the whole celebration warmer if we can share those stories together um, because those stories are a rich fabric of who we are as God's children and it's fun to remember them and share them. So take some note cards home. Um, you can do it here at church too, but you know, like if you want to take them home, bring them back, put them on our board. Enough said about that. Um, other announcements. Next week, we're going to welcome officially Sherry Query to ALC. She has been, um, she's our new office administrator, and she started two weeks ago now. So Marilyn Health Trainer, then I went to Bible camp, and she spent the whole week in the office alone, but Marilyn was good enough to pop in and say hello and make sure everything was going okay this last week, and um, now she's on week three. And we'd like to officially welcome her as our new office admin and get to know her and begin her ministry with some prayer. So we're going to do that next Sunday. Um, and in between services, we're going to have a little coffee fellowship time for her. And um, everybody can have a donut and get to know each other a little bit. And if you can't make next Sunday, then just stop by the office and say, hello, I'm so-and-so. I met you at coffee, but there were a million people around you, so I'm going to spend a little more time today. Okay. Um, the last thing to point out is, in the very back page of the um, bulletin today are all of the things that are coming up in the future. We have um, events down through December. So if you're able to, mark them on your calendar and plan on coming to all of those things. Other announcements to make note of today? In our prayers today, we hold um, the Welsh family. Michael's dad, Terry, passed away um, earlier at the beginning of this month. The funeral for him will be on Saturday. So hold the Welsh family in your prayers. Also, um, we've been praying for Margaret Weirs. Margaret is back home at the Waterford um, and recovering and gaining strength again. Um, and we've been praying for Harold Bartlett. Harold is at Lancaster um, Rehab Center, and he's working hard on rehabbing and hoping to get to come home. So prayers for hard work and prayers for, it's not fun to be at the nursing home, so prayers for perseverance or, you know, um, God knows. And then um, Sophie's grandmother passed away this week. So prayers for Sophie as she mourns her grandma's death. Um, on her dad's side. And 
in prayers for um, Juanita Worth and her um, her extended family. They she lost a friend um, a friend and almost family member who was very close to her this month this week. So prayers for them as well. And then I think prayers for everybody who's dealing with COVID because there have been lots of my friends who have come down with COVID lately. So prayers for that and for our community as we figure out how to like live with the new normal that is. Okay, other prayers today? Then let's begin our worship. We rise and we sing together. endures forever. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires are known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us. And for his sake, God forgives us of all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by Christ's authority, I therefore declare to us today the entire forgiveness of all our sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>
You are always more ready to hear than we are to pray. And you gladly give us more than either we desire or deserve. Pour upon us your abundant mercy. Forgive us those things that weigh on our conscience. And give us those good things that come only through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. From Genesis chapter 18. Then the Lord said, How great is the outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah, and how very grave their sin. I must go down and see whether they have done altogether according to the outcry that has come to me, and if not, I will know. So the men turned from there and went toward Sodom, while Abraham remained standing before the Lord. Then Abraham came near and said, Will you indeed sweep away the righteous with the wicked? Suppose there are 50 righteous within the city. Will you then sweep away the place and not forgive it for the 50 righteous who are in it? Far be it from you to do such a thing, to slay the righteous with the wicked, so that the righteous fare as the wicked. Far be that from you. Shall not the judge of all the earth do what is just? And the Lord said, If I find at Sodom fifty righteous in the city, I will forgive the whole place for their sake. Abraham answered, Let me take it upon myself to speak to the Lord, I who am but dust and ashes. Suppose five of the fifty righteous are lacking. Will you destroy the whole city for lack of five? And he said, I will not destroy it if I find forty-five there. Again, he spoke to him, Suppose forty are found there. He answered, For the sake of forty, I will not do it. Then he said, Oh, do not let the Lord be angry if I speak. Suppose thirty are found there. He answered, I will not do it if I find thirty there. He said, Let me take it upon myself to speak to the Lord. Suppose twenty are found there. He answered, For the sake of twenty, I will not destroy it. Then he said, Oh, do not let the Lord be angry if I speak just once more. Suppose ten are found there. He answered, For the sake of ten, I will not destroy it. The word of the Lord. The second reading is taken from Colossians chapter 2. As you therefore have received Jesus Christ, the Lord, continue to live your lives in him, rooted and built up in him and established in the faith, just as you were taught, abounding in thanksgiving. See to it that no one takes you captive through philosophy and empty deceit, according to human tradition, according to the elemental spirits of the universe, and not according to Christ. For in him the whole fullness of deity dwells bodily. And you have come to fullness in him who is the head of every ruler and authority. In him also you were circumcised with the spiritual circumcision by putting off the body of the flesh in the circumcision of Christ. When you were buried with him in baptism, you were also raised with him through faith in the power of God who raised him from the dead. And when you were dead in trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made you alive together with him when he forgave us all our trespasses, erasing the record that stood against us with its legal demands. He set this aside, nailing it to the cross. He disarmed the rulers and authorities and made a public example of them, triumphing over them in it. Therefore, do not let anyone condemn you in matters of food and drink or of observing festivals, new moons, or Sabbaths. These are only a shadow of what is to come, but the substance belongs to Christ. Do not let anyone disqualify you, insisting on self-abasement and worship of angels, dwelling on visions, puffed up without cause by a human way of thinking, and not holding fast to the head from whom the whole body nourished and held together by its ligaments and sinews, grows with a growth 
that is from God, the word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to Luke, the 11th chapter. Please rise as you're able. Jesus was praying in a certain place, and when he had finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray as John taught his disciples. And he said to them, When you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Give us each day your daily bread. And forgive us our sins, for we ourselves forgive everyone indebted to us, and do not bring us to the time of trial. And he said to them, Suppose one of you has a friend, and you go to him at midnight and say to him, Friend, lend me three loaves of bread, for a friend of mine has arrived, and I have nothing to set before him. And he answers from within, Do not bother me. The door has already been locked, and my children are with me in bed. I cannot get up and give you anything. I tell you, even though he will not get up and give him anything because he is a friend, at least because of his persistence, he will get up and give him whatever he needs. So I say to you, ask and it will be given to you. Search and you will find. Knock and the door will be open for you. For everyone who asks receives, and everyone who searches finds, and for everyone who knocks, the door will be open. Is there anyone among you who, if a child asks for a fish, will give a snake instead of a fish? Or if a child asks for an egg, will give a scorpion? If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more? Will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. I invite our young people up for our children's message today. Do you have certain times that you pray every day? Yeah. At night time, before bed. Yep. At dinner. Yep. Yeah. At breakfast. Yeah. At lunch. Meals, when we sit down and eat together, right? If you are not with your family when it's time for lunch, do you say a prayer? And you eat something good, whether your family is there or not. Is that, yeah? Yeah. Does your family need to be there when you pray? No. Nope. Do you have to pray at certain times of a day? No. Can you pray when you're out on a hike? Yeah. Can you pray when you're swimming? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you blow bubbles and pray. Yeah. Can you pray when you're scared? Yeah. How about when you're happy? Yes. Is there any time that you can't pray? No. How come? Yeah. Because you don't know what you're going to say? How? Because God's always listening. Does it work that way with any of your other friends? No. Your other friends love you very, very much, but they are not there 24-7. But God is, and God says, it don't matter. Midnight, and you can't sleep, and you need help, it's okay. I'm listening, call on me for prayer. Let's pray. Gracious God, whatever we're doing, wherever we're at, especially when we're alone, you invite us to pray. Then, Lord, help us to know that you are with us 
and open our hearts to listen to what you might have to say. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks for coming up today. Just one. Grace and peace to you this day from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I think one of the greatest gifts of sending our kids to camp is the way they teach our kids to pray. At camp, we pray in silly ways. We sing the prayers at mealtimes to the songs of Superman or to the song of the Coca-Cola commercial or to the song of whatever happens to be most fun at that particular time. And it's silly. And it's got all kinds of action. And it reminds us to be thankful to the Lord. And at camp, we pray to the Lord when we have worship. And sometimes it's silly and sometimes it's very, very serious. And at camp, we pray at Bible study time in our small groups. And at camp, we pray at nighttime as we go to bed together in our small groups. And at camp, we pray at all kinds of times and in all kinds of ways. At Carol Joy, they have poles put up all over camp. They're called prayer poles. And they're put up at places that the kids walk past on their way to things, on their way to the mic on the way to the mud hike, they pass a pole. On their way to the swimming pool, they pass a pole. On their way to climb the high ropes course, they pass this pole. And every time they pass a prayer pole that looks like a great big pole with a cross beam on top, the group that they're with gathers at the pole, puts their hands on each other's shoulders, and says a prayer. Whatever happens to be on their minds at that time. The counselor usually says, who wants to pray? And whoever feels the spirit says a prayer. So we might say, dear Lord, we're on our way to the mud hike, let there be good mud. Happens. Dear Lord, we're on our way to the swimming pool, let us have fun. Dear Lord, we're on our way to the high ropes course, keep everyone safe. It's short, it's simple, it's on our way. I personally love this. It's one of my most favorite things about camp, because... I love that it teaches our kids that it doesn't matter what we're up to or where we're going, we can pray on the way. One of my personal favorite times to pray is while driving my car. I know some of you are like, you should pray while driving your car, Pastor. We've seen you drive, right? <laughs> yes, okay. But really, the reason I like to pray while driving my car is because often it's this chunk of quiet time right? I drop the kids off and I drive to church. And if I turn my radio off, I have 15 minutes. I'm on my way to the hospital. And so I'm thinking about whoever I'm going to visit. I'm on my way to do a funeral. I'm on my way to Bible camp. I'm on my way to whatever. I'm on my way to pick up my kids and I wonder how their day is. It's easy. There's always something to talk to God about. And sometimes I've listened to something on the radio. <laughs> right? So you turn it off, and you have this minute of quiet. And you pray as you go. And God guides the journey. I love that at camp we have these silly little prayer poles. And we teach our kids to pray as we go. Because that's at least... A, a really big chunk of what Jesus is talking about today in our gospel lessons when his disciples say, teach us to pray. He gives them words. He gives them the words of the Lord's Prayer, which when we think about it, sums up every last need in our entire lives, right? To pray and talk to God about everything. That's what the Lord's Prayer reminds us of. Everything is wrapped up in there if we think about the words when we pray that. But then he goes on and talks about, about the constantness of prayer. That prayer is really about a relationship with God that we can have at all times and in all places. And that even, even in the middle of the night, God is there. 
that's a big part of what our lesson is about. It's interesting, isn't it? Jesus is speaking to people who are most likely Gentiles, because that's what the Gospel of Luke is written to. And he's speaking to folks who are living in the Greco-Roman world. And he says, when you pray, say, Our Father, or specifically say, Daddy. That's a rather loaded word in Jesus' time. Because you see, fathers had ultimate control of their families. The idea was that they would be good, that they would be caring and compassionate, and that they would care for their families well. And it was a lot of responsibility to place on somebody. But the way that it played out was that fathers had the ability to make all the decisions. They had all the power. When a newborn baby was born, the father could welcome that child into the family with love. Or the father could insist that the child be put out and abandoned. Or the father could say that it needed to be sold to slavery. All of those things were things that fathers could do. So what does it mean that God says, when you call, call on me, our Father, like a parent you love. In our world, not every parent is a good parent. And yet, every heart longs to be loved by a parent who loves us unconditionally. The only one who will ever meet that mark is God. Human parents simply conspire to be that kind and compassionate. And even the ones that cry really hard mess up along the way. And yet, God says, I love you so much. Call on me with the intimacy of a child who's talked to their, to their parents. Jesus knows us well. He knows that we fail in a lot of different ways. He goes on to talk about when you can call on somebody, on God with prayer. He says, if you go to your neighbor's house in the middle of the night and you knock on your friend's door and you say, friend, get up and give me some bread, they'll get up. Because, well, they're tired of hearing you pound. But even as we say that, we know that's not always true, is it? Sometimes our, lo our relationships with each other are so dysfunctional that it doesn't matter how hard we pound. They may not be with it enough to hear us, or they may not even be there. Yet God says, pound at midnight, I'll be listening. Pound at two in the morning when your friends don't want to hear from you, I'll be there. And I will provide a way through that night. Then he goes on. Ask and it shall be given to you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door will be open. All of you, if a child asks for a fish, won't give a snake. If a child asks for an egg, won't give a scorpion. Except for again, we do that all the time. We do that all the time. Sometimes we think we're giving each other good gifts, and they're really gifts that bite back in some way or another. Even when we try, our gifts aren't always that perfect. So what does it mean when Jesus says, ask, seek, knock, I'll provide? Does it mean that God is going to answer every one of our prayers and all we have to do is ask? Let's hope not. Let's hope not. Because if that's how it's really going to go down, our world's going to be in big trouble real soon. Let me give you an example. A silly one. It is very silly. But I'm sure as I tell you the silly story, you can all think of real dead serious ones on your own, right? 
we go to these prayer poles at camp. And on our way, we're heading towards a mud hike, so we pray, Dear Lord, we're going on a mud hike. Let the mud be good. Good mud. What's it take for good mud? Water! Right. At the same time, at the same moment, Dear Lord, we're going swimming. Let's have sunny weather. Right? I thought about that as I'm standing at the pool thinking about good mud. It takes rain. And the camp needs rain. If there's no rain, all the other things don't happen. Rain's important. And yet, while I'm at camp for that one week that I get to be at camp, guess how much rain I want to see? None. No rain. I never pray for rain at camp. I pray for rain when I go home from camp. See how bad it is? God could not possibly make us all happy. And if God answered our prayers for the specific things that we pray for every last time, we'd all be a mess. We'd all be a mess. Because even in our hearts when we think we know precisely what we need, there are so many times when we're wrong. That's not what we really need. We just think so at the time. God doesn't say, I will answer your prayers by raining down what you asked for. When you pray for money for the rent, $300 won't just magically appear. Although sometimes it does. When you pray for a way through the test, God will not rain down an answer key for you. Sorry, Melanie. Hate to break that to you. When you ask for the miracle pill to cure everything. That's not how it works. But God says, ask, seek, and knock. Because you know how to give good gifts. And how much more will your Heavenly Father give the good gift to you? The Heavenly Father will give you the Holy Spirit. How much more will the Heavenly Father give you the Holy Spirit to those who ask. That's the gift that God gives us in prayer. All the other stuff that we need comes because the Holy Spirit is given and we're given this relationship with God and when the Spirit is within us because God gives us that Spirit, we don't walk through life alone. The Spirit guides us Sometimes, the $300 appears out of nowhere. I cannot tell you how many times that has happened. Randomly. Not poof. Not just poofed into my checking account randomly. But I'll be short. Just a little bit. And then, <laughs> I'll find 20 bucks in my coat pocket from last year, last winter, that I forgot about. Or a friend will send a card. And it's there for one reason or another. It's a funny thing how sometimes when we need a specific thing, it shows up. Holy Spirit knows. Sometimes it looks more like God introduces us to the friend that we need at that particular moment. And sometimes the Holy Spirit's answers to our prayers looks more like God puts us in somebody else's life because God knows that somehow serving someone else will right us in some way also. The answers to our prayers are often, I think, in the eye of the beholder because the Holy Spirit helps us to see God's presence in our lives as we go. And what I say is an answer to a prayer somebody else will say is a complete and utter fluke. But don't let them say it. Because if it was an answer to the prayer for you, then that is precisely what it is. God says, I love you so much, so much, that I invite you to share your entire life with me. Pray. 
have a constant conversation going. Pray at meal times and at bedtimes and at all the normal times. And pray at random times. When you're suddenly feeling alone and you need a reminder that you're not. Not ever. And then listen. Listen for the Holy Spirit to speak from within you and to say, I love you. We will walk through this together. Amen. Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Rooted and built up in Christ, we pray for the church, embolden church leaders to take risks for the sake of the gospel, and equip the baptized to proclaim your extravagant love for the whole world. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Rejoicing in the works of your hand, we pray for the natural world. Make rivers and lakes, oceans, and all waterways sparkle with your radiance. Protect water sources. Especially we pray for the Missouri, for the Platte, and for all that flows through Lincoln. Strengthen those who defend them. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Interceding on behalf of the vulnerable, we pray for those, for the peoples of the world. Inspire all rulers and governing authorities with your justice. Guide the works of legislatures and public officials 
that they may advocate for the well-being of those they serve. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Persistence in prayer. We pray for our neighbors in need. To all who have hunger, give daily bread. To all who have bread, give hunger for justice. Open us to the cries of all who suffer, especially those that we lift to you in our hearts today. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Abounding in thanksgiving, we pray for this congregation. Bless the prayers and fellowship ministries of this place. Call us together in times of praise and blessing, trouble and sorrow. In your holy name, merciful God, receive your prayer. Buried with Christ in baptism and raised with him to new life, We give thanks for all your saints who rest in your eternal presence. Join our voices with theirs as we sing of your great glory. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Receive the prayers of your children, merciful God, and hold us forever in your steadfast love. Through Jesus Christ, our holy wisdom. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please turn to your neighbors and share that peace today. Please rise and let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, ruler of heaven and earth. Day by day you shower us with blessings. As you have raised us to new life in Christ, give us glad and generous hearts, ready to praise you and respond to all those in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be their name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The meal is ready and all are welcome at this table. Please come forward as the ushers give instruction today.
receive this blessing. Now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you forever in his grace and love. Amen. Let us pray. Blessed Jesus, in this rich meal of grace, you have fed us with your body, the bread of life. Now send us forth to bear your life-giving hope to a world in need. Amen. We are sent out to love and serve God with our lives. We go with God's blessings. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.